Hello ladies. Right, welcome to my home. This is attempt number, I have no idea how many, to show you um, what I do for my makeup as an older lady. Uh, I'm 52 and I've just noticed my door handle's hanging off behind me, never mind. Um, and this is what I would do, if, if I were just doing everyday makeup for just popping into work, I would do a bit of eyeliner, a bit of mascara, a bit of concealer, powder, blusher, that maybe a bit lippy, that'd be about it. But this is what I would do if I were doing a belly dance performance or going out for dinner or something special. Okay, so here we go. So I don't wear foundation, but I will show you what I do with a primer and um, a foundation and um, that contouring thing that girls do now. And this is what I would do if I were going to do it on a bride or somebody for a special occasion. So find a primer that works for you benefit do fabulous ones unique have a beautiful one if you've got oily skin or sort of um quite red skin marked skin but this is absolutely fine this is a correcting primer it's illuminating so it, um it's really good if you're gonna have photographs taken because it will reflect any light so a little bit of that on and then you can do this any way you like i just kind of dab and blend a bit around this sort of heart area here um, and as you can see I have quite a few blemishes on my skin at the moment and then I'm going to take one of these fab little spongy things now I did post recently I don't know whether anybody saw it about keeping your applicators very very clean and um, if you saw that you will know why that's so important and it is very important because this poor girl um, obviously didn't keep her applicators clean, got a small open wound, so just like a spot, like that, because you know it's that time of the month, and um, was pushing her um, makeup on with a dirty brush and ended up with a massive infection, like really big infection on her face that caused her eye to swell up and all sorts, it was quite grim. So that's a correcting primer that I've put on. And I'm just going to keep blending that in. Oh, I've just lost my specs, sorry. Uh, that's my hairband gone. Never mind, hey? Oh, I am very much a take me as you find me girl. Um, it's taken me a long time to get to that point. But if you don't like what you see, that's not my issue. It's yours. Get over it. So, um, a concealer. This is a... a this is one my daughter gave me actually. It's an eye eraser. It's supposed to go under your eyes. But I actually use it as a concealer as well. Oh, it's back to front in this mirror. It's all a bit weird. So I'm going to dab that on around any areas that really need that extra bit of concealing. I can't do this back to front in the, in the computer. It's very strange. There's a mirror over there, so if I keep glancing off to the side, that'll be why. And where am I going? There. Blend that in again with you. Now you can use a brush. I used to use a really, really, really lovely Jane Iredell brush to do all my blending. And uh, it was, it's fab. But these things are just, they're actually great because they can really get into the corners as well. They're quite gentle on the old skin. And do the job very well. Now, if you are wanting to know what to do with a contourer, this is how you would do it. This is a contouring stick, um, Wet n Wild. Where is it? Wet n Wild Dual Ended Contour Stick. So you have a light side. And the dark side. Sorry, oh, I'll try and be a grown up now. So with the dark bit, and again, it depends on the shape of your face and your hairline, but generally, where am I going? Round there, and then round there, just to give a little bit there. And then your temples, so from the corner of your eye to the pointy bits of your hairline, you can whack a bit on there as well just to give a bit of contouring there and then from sort of the top of your ear down to aiming towards the corner of your mouth but don't take it that far and back to the 
um, bottom of your ear and fill in and on this one from the top of the ear aiming towards the corner of your mouth don't go quite that far to the bottom of your ear and fill in and then a bit under your jawline to emphasize that you can go absolutely mad with the stuff but you really don't need to and then with the light side of it color in the other areas so this is a bit like wearing the foundation for me and I don't like it and I think for older skin as well you've got to be so so careful that you don't end up with too much in the creases and cracks that you get when you're older of which I have plenty so back to my fabulous little blending spongy thing and just work it away work 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 make sure that you work into the hairline do not stop like a quarter of an inch away because that just looks so monkey in my opinion so dab 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 and blend and rub and blend and rub in my personal opinion less is more um, but each to their own and get that worked in it takes several minutes to do this really really well but a lot of people feel it's worth it I don't I don't do this every day at all I really couldn't be bothered to do this every day got sleeping to be sleeped I'd rather be asleep for an extra 15 minutes and I don't take my nose stud out either when I put makeup on but it does need to be worked out into the creases around your nose for well and for heaven's sake ladies go slightly behind the ear and down your chin and neck if you're wanting to know what's a good foundation for you I find a reputable shop um, go to a good boots or one of the higher end um, big stores like John Lewis or Debenhams or one of those something along those lines where they've got representatives there that are in theory trained now not every rep is as good as their brand even though they're supposed to be trained by them so visit a couple find one that relates to you that a makes you feel special b clearly knows what they're talking about c doesn't look like a drag queen and that listens to you to what you want to do if you want a very natural looking foundation um, listen to what they say if they say well this is like a double cover that's not a natural foundation um, and try a few now if you then want to go shopping by yourself test it on here first so if I get this pale one here look test it here can you see that I mean that's so fair and if that works and you think yeah that's quite a good colour for me test it here and you know that's what the testers are for take a good mirror with you make sure there's some light if it blends well there you're on a winner but don't buy it then in there see what it's like after a couple of hours and if it's still a good look then go back and get it so that's my um, concealer my no, so my primer, my concealer and my um, contouring done. I don't know whether you can see here or not, but I've actually got that sort of thing going on there now. And I've got a bit more of a jawline because I've got quite a lot of chin there. So that nice little bit of jawline there, bit of contouring here, bit of shape here and a bit of shape around my head. Now, these kind of kits are really good as well if you've got several things that need... Um, correcting it's very creamy it's not a powder and um, I am a bit of a pleb and use my fingers so this is the um, dark circle brightener so going down into a little V so starting in the corner going down into a V onto your cheek and up to the corner of your eye and just very softly with a fingertip 
or a brush or a sponge, whatever you choose to wear. I've just gone a bit dark, sorry. Blend that in. So that gets rid of the dark shadows under your eyes. And it's a good one as well. I like this one, it's Rimmel. You've just been giving it to um, write a review on and I really do quite like it. And then there's the nice purpley, bluey one. Oh goodness me, I'm not very good at this. Um, which I tend to put on as a bit of a highlighter up here. I'm going to blend that in in a moment. But it just gives you that nice brightness and a little bit on there and just a tiny bit here and here. Now I don't have um, an awful lot of redness so I don't use the red bit uh, or the red cover-up but if you do have very red either broken veins or redness around here um, pop that on uh, as your primer and that will cover a multitude of sins it's good stuff okay so that's um, that's all that and then I always set makeup with a pressed powder come on Nikki you should be getting this now this is a silk finish powder you can see I've just got it from Asda that's it silk finish pressed powder don't have to spend a fortune it still does the trick again you can use a brush I just use the applicator that comes with it dab on And I'm being quite gentle, I'm not pulling my skin very much, I'm trying to keep more elastic, el elasticity, I can't even say it, um, there is. And that's that set. And I'm going to move on to my eyebrows. Now you can do eyebrows in a couple of ways. You can use one of these, um, that's an eyeliner, that's not what I was looking for. You can use a brush, uh, sorry, a pencil. Um, there it is, got it. These pencils are great. They have um, angled um, lead stuff, eyeliner, and they also have the spoolie on the end, which is brilliant. So you need to get in nice and close and give your eyebrows a good brush. Brush them upwards. People hugely underestimate the importance of eyebrows, lots of ladies do especially. Um, and good eyebrows absolutely frame the eyes and make the face look complete. But then there's also a trend to go a little bit too over the top with them at the moment and I personally don't like that. So now I'm going to swap to, this is called highbrow, I don't know if you can see that on there, highbrow and it's a kit and you get the colour that is your eyebrows plus a highlighter and you get these stencils. Now if you want to use a stencil, how's this going to work on here then? I think I have to do it that way don't I? And you just, you literally just put the stencil over your eyebrow, I can't do it on here because it's all back to front. <laughs> Put the stencil over your eyebrow and fill it in, okay? Um, sorry, it's all back to front on here. So you get a little brush with one angled brush and one non-angled brush. So I take the makeup, the angled brush, and I draw the chances of me doing this on here are next to nil. Under the eyebrow, along and round. I'm never going to get this done on this computer, doing this back to front, sorry. And then across the top and fill that brow. That bit that makes, the, you see I've got a dip on this one, makes me look a bit scowly. So I want to try and fill those in. So I'm going to have to do this in the mirror, ladies, sorry. So I'm just going to look in the mirror over here. And I've completely daubed that in the wrong place. Don't take that off, because that went wrong. Actually, let me use the little mirror here and then I can do it in front of you and so drawing in the line underneath your eyebrow with the little angled brush and taking it down and then drawing in the top line as well to fill in that gap it makes me look very scowly and following round and then little upwards motions here 
to follow the hair growth patterns of the eyebrows and then fill in the bits in the middle. Now this eyebrow on me has a life of its own because it has a scar in it where I stabbed myself with my thumbnail when I was rushing one day. So I do need to then tame it. So that's a bit better already. And then this one, I've already made a bit of a hash of, but never mind. We'll keep going anyway. So this one's a bit dark for me. I don't normally do my eyebrows quite as dark as this. But it's all good. So they look better already. And then the little highlighter that comes with it, I bob under here in that highlighting area where the, the big arch is. And I also put a little bit on over the top, again, to, as that highlighting effect that makes this area stand out. Now, this thing is a godsend, um, she says confidently, being unable to find it. This is a pencil that my daughter gave me, and it's neutral, as you can see, it's a correcting pencil. And if you need to, just go under your brow and completely define that shape if you want to. Again, it's not something I would do generally, But if you want to, it does not make a difference. So I think I've got quite sarcastic eyebrows. They always look like I'm kind of a bit, you are, and a bit sarky, but they're what I've got and then what I go with. Now, if you are not confident about doing your eyebrows, which a lot of people aren't if they've never been shown how to do them, and that's fine, find a really good um, HD brow person, lady, uh, in Huddersfield in Yorkshire, where I know there's quite a few of you ladies. There's a lady called Rachel Gomesall. She's amazing. Go and see Rachel, and she will shape and tint your eyebrows for you, and then it's just a case of upkeep. You can then get practicing on doing the, the eyebrows in that shape and in that way and spot on absolutely perfect and then literally you can get away with a bit of mascara a bit of eyeliner go if you've got good eyebrows so I'm now going to move on to some eyeshadow now I have this eye if you can see is puffier here than this eye so when my eyes are open and I'm looking at somebody normally um, you can't really see any eyelid this bit on this side, whereas you can on this one. So I have to try and be a bit cleverer on this side. So I am going to use, I have my, whoops, I don't have that anymore. I have my big MAC um, eyeshadow palette and I'm going to be using this one as the highlighter and this one on my eyelids. And I'm then going to use the pale browns and the darker brown. So um, just bear with me. So I might, might need a nice big brush to use that highlighter and just go over that area. It's very soft, this brush. Doesn't pull the skin too badly on the eyes. Right into the corner and right the way up into there. I can't begin to tell you how weird this effect is, trying to do this in a computer set where everything's back to front. And I don't do myself anyway. I mean, I do other people and I've done demos um, and lessons on other people, but trying to do it on yourself, blimey, it's hard. So quick look in the mirror. I can't see a thing in there, but that'll do. So that's my highlighter. I, I tend to follow what nature does. So we have bits that stick out here and here here and here, and then bits that are deeper, the socket. So those are the bits that we're going to emphasize with the co more contouring. So that's that bit. And then a little trick, when you put um, eyeshadows on with a brush, it goes on very softly and subtly. If you use a fingertip, it becomes more intense. So for my eyelids, 
to make them pop a bit more I tend to use my fingertip and very very gently oh I've gone all dark again sorry um, pop a bit on on there and then another really soft slightly shaped brush a very pale brown not too much on it and I'm just going to go from the middle of the socket into the corner of the eye not going too far out not going too far into the corner and I'm going to take it up a bit higher up towards the eyebrow in a nice arced shape a little bit more of that and this is my droopy eye I think isn't it on this on the computer yes it's my right eye so yes this is my droopy eyelid so we're going to use a, a bit more of a contour on that eye than the other one and then on the other eye so keeping the brush flat so it's going on like that not like that initially keeping the brush flat to try and follow the contour of the eye it's just going to be a fairly natural look I don't go mad I don't go I don't want to look like a drag queen and I think the older I get the more makeup I wear the worse I look so the more natural effect I can get that makes me just look like I've, I've just you know made a tiny bit of effort and I look fabulous um, nobody needs to know it's taken me four hours to achieve that minimal effort look do they nobody needs to make that so there we go so we already have a bit of a contour going on there but I need to emphasize that contour more so on the um, right eye than on the left eye so using a smaller um, slightly shaped but incredibly soft brush I'm going to use a much darker brown now and I'm going to start on the outer corner of my eye and little circles I'm going to blend every makeup artist's favourite word blend ladies blend please don't have harsh lines it just looks so bad and gently wiping up now some people do their eyes first and then do their um, foundation or base um, afterwards so that there's no fallout of the shadow eyeshadow onto their skin and that's absolutely fine you will find the way that works for you this is the way I do it now you see five years ago when I did that that skin didn't pucker like that and stay there Age. so I have um, cleaned my skin I've toned it to get rid of any chemicals that are still on it and I have moisturized it so I've done everything good, I'm a good girl in that way try and use a nighttime moisturiser if you're not going to use anything else at all moisturise your skin at night because that's when um, that's when you get more moisture but you should be wearing a day moisture because they have the sun protection factors in as well so that's a bit more eyeshadow going on there now just for giggles I'm going to put a bit of purple on so I'm going to use the same brush because I am that lazy and I'm, oh, I can't see what I'm doing I'm going to put a little bit of purple quite a dark purple just in the inner corner there and in that inner corner there just to give it a bit of colour and because quite often when I'm dancing particularly I wear purple reds and purples are my colours she says wearing an orange t-shirt and that's just given an extra bit. I don't know whether you can see that. Can you see that? Hmm, probably not. And then I'm going to just do the tiniest bit over here again, just to give it a bit of colour. I hope you can see this, ladies, the colour that's going on. People are really scared of colour. But again, if you use a little bit, just a little bit, and blend it well you can always add more if you want to adding is fine it's removing the stuff that's pretty tricky and again I'm just going up a little bit higher on this side to try and make more of a shadow effect and deepen it so that's my eyeshadow 
And that's it, pretty much done, if I'm honest. That's all I do, even when I'm performing, because the rest of it is going to be defined with eyeliner. So um, I'm just going to put the lid back on my primer base stuff there. So that's the wrong eyeliner. Where's my eyeliner gone? Okay, this is not good when you're using that eyeliner. So I treated myself to a Dior Pro Liner, a waterproof one, because as soon as I put makeup on, my eyes stream. So this one, as you can see, is slightly angled when it pops out. Well, it was slightly angled. It's more sort of rounded now. Now, to put your eyeliner on, do not pull your skin. If you put your finger on and then pull firmly, you'll get a lovely line, but you'll regret it in five years' time. Um, so just hold the skin, don't pull it, and keeping the pencil flat. So again, not like that. Not like that. Like that. So the pencil flat, draw inwards from the outer corner. I'm looking in the mirror here to do this because I haven't got a hope of doing this. So holding the skin, not pulling, go inwards. And then taking a very, very, very fine, but incredibly soft brush, hold the skin, don't pull, and just blend that line along. Now you can see when I drew on, because this eyeliner is so soft, I only took it about halfway, if that. And then I just stretch it out a little bit further with this little beautiful soft brush. And it really is soft. And then um, I'll put that one down. And then again with this eye, hold the skin. Try and turn inwards to your mouth. And blend across the top of your eyelid. Now you can use gel liner, liquid liner, eyeliner pencil. This one is just so soft, I love it. So that's then defined those eyes a little bit more, if you can see. The light's a bit odd, isn't it? And then what I do, now I would love to be able to to do the flick eyeliner and my daughter-in-law Jess is going to show you how she does hers in a bit but all I do then is angle up towards my eyebrow and just do a little line very soft little line up towards my the end of my eyebrow and I don't go too far because my eyelids droop and I don't want it to look silly so I just drew a little bit of a line on there I don't know whether you can see that Hold the skin. Helps if you've got pencil sticking out there. Okay. And again there. Can you see me doing can you see that going on? I might just do a little bit more on. Which eye is that one? That eye. Oh, that one was a bit heavy. No. Yeah, let's do a little bit more on that one because it's softer than the other one and then my lovely 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 soft brush comes into play again hold the skin and just fill that in a bit so you get more of a cat's eye flick than a and bring that forwards again and on that eye that's my phone pinging sorry ladies so there we go so that's that, that's a bit more defined there. Now if you want to be really, really clever, if you have big eyes, the thing with black eyeliner, I'd never use black eyeliner, this is purple, uh, it's a very dark purple or I use smoky grey or very dark brown. When we wear black it makes us look slimmer, when we put black around our eyes it narrows them down. So unless you've got really big eyes or if, you want, if you've got large round eyes and you want to make them more almond, you can use black but you still get an excellent effect, a much better effect with a smoky grey, um, steely grey, you know, a really dark brown or um, like a dark purple, very, very dark blue, midnight blue, something like that. If you really want to define your eyes, you can go into the corner of your eye and just draw a very soft line up to the beginning of your eyelashes. 
Can half make your eyes water? Um, getting the angle on my pencil, freaky doing it this way. Oh, I've gone dark again. Oh, there we go. Sorry, ladies. Uh, ow, just put myself in the eye. Don't do that. Never a good idea. And then the tiniest bit. Now, I don't start at the outer corner. I start just a smidge in. And I don't take it right the way to the inner corner either. I stop. A little way across. I have to say that is the weirdest, weirdest effect doing that. Now you can use a cotton bud to blend this in. Here you can use your finger or a nice soft brush as long as it's soft and doesn't really, really, really pull that skin. And then take that out to the outer corner. That's really not worked on that side at all, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. It's just hard doing it in the computer when you're not used to doing it. Okay, and this is where, if you make a mistake, this is where your Wonder Pencil comes into play. And you can um, just do a little bit of a neaten up with that. Under each eye. And then that's nice, that's nicely defined then actually. I look much different in the mirror to how I look on here. Can you see that? It looks a bit blobby on here. Wrong eye, Nikki. There, it looks like it's blobby, but it doesn't look blobby in the mirror. Okay, eyelashes. Torture device. Eyelash curlers. Makes a huge difference using an eyelash curler. Um, I use Benefit They're Real um, mascara. I love this mascara. This is just my favourite mascara ever. So when you open your mascara, pull it out and scrape off the extra, the excess mascara. There's not a lot of excess on this one because I've had it for a long time. But if you want more mascara on your brush, rather than pulling it out and pushing it back in a lot, don't do that. Just twirl it around. And if your mascara is quite dry, then by all means, pop it in um, a mug of hot water before you open it. Okay. Oh, now my nose is running. Sorry, guys. A torture device. So, rest your eye. These must be clean as well, by the way, otherwise you pull your eyelashes out. Rest your eyelashes on the white cushion. Start to squeeze very gently. If it hurts, stop. If it doesn't hurt, press a little bit harder. If it hurts, stop. If it doesn't, give it a really good squeeze, like a really good squeeze for about 10 seconds. Release, angle it up slightly, squeeze again, release, angle it up and just take those tips up, okay? That's made my eyes water. So I'm taking the excess off and I'm going to start applying mascara. And the re one of the reasons I love this mascara so much is because the brush has a little bubble right on the end. Can you see the bubble on the end of it? So you can really get into the, the lashes in the corners of your eye. And the other, I'm just going to go to the mirror over here. Just It's a bit far away so I can't really see what the heck I'm doing. And keep applying more and more mascara whilst it's wet until you're happy. Don't go and do the other eye and then add another coat later on because that's when it starts to get really clumpy and look a bit nasty, in my opinion. So apply again. And I'm also twirling my brush as I go so that... Um, there's fresh mascara going on. So can can we see that? I hope you can see that. So that's that eye done. Put the mascara brush back in and start again on this eye. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
God, this is an experience for me, I tell you. I hope you guys appreciate this. All you older ladies. Older ladies. Squeeze, release, move it a bit. Squeeze, release, move it a bit. And just take it up the tip. Because that, rather than having a right angle bend, when you, you, you squeeze there so it comes up, and then you take it a bit further along the eyelash and squeeze, so it's coming round in a bend like that, rather than a 90 degree angle, which we don't really want. Okay, I'm sort of looking in the mirror over here to do this as well. It's ours. Coming right into the inner corner with that lovely bobble on the end of the brush. Thing is, everybody's different, so everybody likes something different. Different things work for different people. You'll find what works for you. It just takes a bit of practice and trial and error with different products but you'll get there if you want to and don't be afraid to ask questions of other people if you see somebody that you like their makeup tell them ask them what they've done how it, they've made it look like that what they've used but remember that just because it works on them doesn't mean it'll work on you and on older skin, you want to be trying to avoid too much shiny, shimmery stuff. Can look a bit tacky. And it can fold into the wrinkles on your skin as well. So I try and avoid it because I don't like that wrinkly effect that I get. I have recently found a pair of false eyelashes that I quite like as well. Um, but I'm not going to put those on today. So, oh, I've just daubed that on. So I'm just trying to do my bottom lashes in the in the computer as well. Not having a lot of success, am I? But and I really am one of these people that is absolutely take me as you find me, or don't. Not my issue. This is my little inspirational thing I have on my makeup mirror. I generally have the tolerance of a premenstrual one of these as well. So if you want to be rude, go for broke. No, it's not going to bother me. Um, so there. So that's my eyes done. If you can see that. So that's that. Blusher. Again, this is where I, I always used to do my contouring with blusher, not with um, a contouring stick. So I take a dark, which way am I going that way? A dark pink blusher and more of a stipply hard brush. And as you can see, this one it needs cleaning. So I'm going to clean this afterwards. You, you can buy brush cleaner, you can use makeup wipes, you can literally. If they're not wooden handled ones, you can soak them in washing up liquid or just rub some washing up liquid on them. Just for heaven's sake, make sure they're clean and dry. So I'm going to go in that same area that I put that contouring on earlier, work it up into my forehead and down here and again on this side of And this really is a very dark pink. When you see it in its in its box, you think, wow, that's that's really dark. That's not gonna have a very nice effect. But when it's blended properly, actually all it does is uh, give you that nice bit of contouring. And then I'm dabbing the outer edge, oh, bring it in, Nikki. Outer edge of the brush there. <sighs> Now, if you were going to do this on somebody else, instead of blowing the brush, you'd flick it so that the, the powder settles. You wouldn't blow on it because no matter how far away you are from the brush, you will end up spitting on the brush, and that's not very healthy or hygienic. And then I just literally go down the outer side of my nose with that powder and blend. 
bringing it into the tip because I've got a bit of a blobby tip of my nose but again it's me like it or leave it and I've gone dark again and then what's left on the brush which is very very little just kind of smoosh around my face a bit and then getting a very soft brush much much softer big brush uh, no actually I don't do that anymore sorry I've changed I'm using a cream rimmel this is going to scare you that is really bright 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 pink but clean fingers rub your finger around it about I'm going to go on that side so about two fingers away from your nose put your first blob on and spread it up the side of your cheek bone so we're following the cheekbone now not going into the contour there just that nice rosy apple bit that's there when you smile like that in little circles not pulling the skin blending blending and that just gives me a little bit of a healthier glow and again about two fingers away on that apple cheek bit of my face blendy blendy smoosh smoosh nice little bit of health there nice healthy glow a little bit of my chin pale pink up on the top there if anything's too shiny sparkly or glittery I can powder it over so it's not the end of the world I hope you can see that ladies can you see that nobody's going to be able to tell me either and then I use a Max Factor Lipfinity um, very neutral one if I'm performing I might put a really bright red on but if I were just going out for dinner with some friends that on it's very neutral as you can see again I'm not a big fan of lip liner it's all a bit 1980s for me and I don't really do it um, and then I use now this is where I do like a bit of sparkle ladies I like my sparkly lips so I'm using a, I think it's a, another rimmel one it might not be um, sparkly lip gloss um it's seen better days i daub that over the top of my very neutral lippy and then we are i'm done my roots need my hair's being done at next weekend so um if i stuck a pin up in that and had my hair up that would be me done thanks for watching feel free to ask me any questions at any time i will try very hard to answer them but if there's anything i haven't covered or you're unsure about just ask that's that's me done that's all i do she says it's taken ages thanks ladies bye